Hey, what's up, Golden Gamers? Welcome back to GG Melee. In another video, I responded to your questions about life advice. That's right, you asked me a lot of things, uh, but some of you had a tough time with instructions, and instead of asking me for life advice, just asked me anything. So we said, all right, we'll just do it, ask me anything as well. So without further ado, I would love to respond to all your questions that were not life advice, but we're about me. JP Jag123, which melee player is most different in person than what you expected before you met them? Hungrybox. You would think that Hungrybox is super duper patient, like zen out of his mind, right? Like the way he plays melee. He beats people by, you know, manipulating their mental stack. You know, he plays, he'll go on the platform and he'll play really defensive. And then, and then just when you think he's not going to come out of shell, he hits you with the pound or whatever, but he's playing that long game. You know, he'll, he'll go to time if it's a floaty, if he needs to, right. Um, and he'll switch, he'll flip those gears and he's got a, you know, he's got immaculate control over the mental aspect, you know, and he's got this godlike patience where at the end of the day, he's going to clutch you out. Right. But the funny thing is if you ever meet Hungrybox, he's always like, He's, he's actually just like a, uh, he's like a dopamine fiend. You know, he's on his phone a lot, you know, um, and I feel like he's a very snappy, like quick, he's not, he doesn't have the personality to me of like someone who's like a patient, like, you know, calm. He's, he's actually very much more of a stream persona. Let's say he's, he's actually a lot like his stream persona in that sense, where it's like high energy and there's, you know, there's always gotta be some, something going on. Next question. Favorite memory as a commentator, favorite memory as a player. My favorite memory as a commentator definitely has to be EVO 2016, um, far and away, just doing that block with Scar. It was like pretty fantastic because, you know, we were up in the skybox above the arena. It was really a spectacular sight. I'd never done anything like that before, seen anything like that. And, and that was also a ridiculous top eight. Hungrybox had that ridiculous comeback against Armada. And there's that really famous shot of Hungrybox popping off and Armada's like sitting in the chair, like looking <laughs> looking like he's questioning his whole existence. I don't think anything is ever going to quite match that for me in terms of the spectacle. My favorite memory is a player. There's a couple of them. I want to say a big one for me was the first time I ever actually took a tournament set off Silent Wolf. Obviously, I didn't take too many of those. He's probably like 30 and like two against me. Because, you know, there's I think there's something really special in like when you beat your sensei. Because there's always that guy that like, you know, raised you where basically they could beat you with any, any, literally any character. And going from like where I could lose to his Kirby to like I could actually take a tournament set off his Fox, like that was like a really proud moment. Next question. Top five commentators in terms of melee skill. Gotta give it to Wobbles uh, overall. I feel like Wobbles, obviously second at Evil, Wobbles was like a top 10 player. And I feel like Wobbles towards the end of his career like actually did become a commentator in the conventional set. So I'm going to give all time. I'm going to give to Wobbles. Um, I think Zoo is way up there uh, also in terms of where he was at all time. I got to put Lovage in that list. I feel like Lovage, he was top 10 at a point. Uh, is still very good, right? Um, will randomly show up and just play really well. I feel like Lovage, you know, he doesn't practice to the degree that I think a lot of the other players might. So he, he kind of fluctuates. Like sometimes he's really, really, really good um, if he's been playing. And, you know, that's the that's the Lovage that randomly took a set off left and right at GTX. I think it was 2018. If we're doing an all-time list, I got to include Chillin' Dude. Obviously, Chillin' Dude had a ridiculous career. Um, honestly, if it's an all-time list, it's going to be like Chillin' and Hugs, right? Like... It's gonna be the people that actually made top 20 who were competing like, you know, to make top eight at majors. Like those are the people I'm gonna include in there. So if it's an all time list, I'm probably gonna round it out with like hugs and chillin. If it's like a current list, it's probably like homemade waffles who's still practicing a lot. And then like maybe me or Vish. Um, me and Vish are pretty close. It's always, I've always thought it's kind of funny between me and Vish. Cause like, I feel like Vish does a little bit better against the field. He's got like probably better wins on average. But then on the flip side, I think when me and Vish play, I actually do very well personally against Vish, but I just think that's it's Fox Falcon. And of course, Hidden Boss, you know, gotta shout him out, especially if we're doing the all-time list. Didn't quite have the level of consistency of somebody of like Chillin' or Hugs during their prime, but you know, Scar would definitely be somebody who, definitely at least for Genesis 1, was looking like a very bright star in the sky. Next question. Favorite thing about the other Golden Gamers? Okay, for Zane, I think it's that he's the best normie smasher. What I mean by that is anyone who's ever seen him, like, like if you just talked to him, if you if you just met him outside of a tournament, you would not know this guy was the best melee player in the world. You know, when you meet Mango, you know that he's like a special person, right? He's different. He's like, you know, he's crass and he's, you know, and, and he's kind of, you know, he, he, you, you immediately know that like, oh, this guy's like different. This guy's special, right? With Zane, like he's so charming and personable and relatable. And also he's very good at normie things. So like, for example, there's that clip of him dancing and I think it's like his sister's or his cousin's wedding or something. And he does a little twirl. Anyone who's seen, we got to put that footage in this video um, because 
when I seen that shit, I was like, how does this guy just have it all? He can play melee at that degree and he can hit dance moves like that. Like that just that just doesn't make any sense. You know, when you when you meet pro gamers, you kind of expect them to be a little awkward. Maybe they've sacrificed certain aspects of their life to get to the skill level they've gotten to. With Zane, you don't feel like he had to make any sacrifices. So my question to Zane is, what did you do? You know, how did you possibly pull that off? Did you kill a man? Uh, for Nun, um, I think the thing about Nun that I really appreciate, like the way he thinks about the game, I think is so different from the way modern players think about it. And I think there's a lot of really great wisdom that he has. Um, that you're just not gonna hear if you talk to other Smash players, right? Like I remember talking to him at main stage about like a tournament set I'd played where he said, you know, that guy you were playing, he wasn't hitting his ledge dashes and actually he looked very nervous when he was on the ledge. He was like, you're playing, I was a Fox dude and he was saying that this guy, he was on the ledge and he, he, had, he didn't have good movement off the ledge, he kept flubbing. And he, and he said, you know, when you fight someone who doesn't have clean movement on the ledge, you gotta realize they're gonna wanna get out of the corner desperately so they're gonna start rolling and they're gonna start you know they they don't they don't trust fighting by the ledge because they know you've got an advantage there because you're hitting your tech skill by the ledge and they're not I feel like when you talk to a lot of other top players they don't talk about things like that they talk about you know the more mechanical aspects of melee they don't they don't talk about the mentality the psychology and i feel like none has an infinite well of psychology uh when it comes to how people think what kind of tells people give um, and I feel like, you know, he's that kind of guy that just has really deep insights about everything. It's not just melee. When I talk to him about life, I feel like he's got a really interesting perspective uh, that, that I'm just not going to hear from a lot of other people. And for PP, you know, I just feel like PP's like, you know, he's such a, he's a very caring person. You know, I feel like PP's thing, when, when you get down to it, he can, he really does consider everything. I've never met a guy who just considers everything the way PP does. You know, he's always thinking about everything from like every possible angle. You know, if there's six people in a room, having a conversation. PP's the guy who's gonna be thinking about all of them and all of their viewpoints and making sure everyone feels included. And I feel like PP has a very thought out approach to how he deals with people and how he, uh, how he makes people feel heard. Next question, top three games that aren't Melee. Great question. Okay, I'm gonna go with a bunch of different, I'm gonna go with a couple different genres here. Obviously, I'm a big JRPG guy, the best JRPG of all time, Chrono Trigger. I'm gonna put Chrono Trigger on my list. Similar genre, but in terms of like the amount of hours I put into this series, uh, I feel like I just got to mention it. Mega Man Battle Network. That game's fucking goaded. Love Mega Man Battle Network. Um, and then I'm going to put in there... I want to put another fighting game in there just for the culture. So I'm going to say Marvel vs. Capcom 3. That's going to be my list. Next question. Players who influence you the most. Silent Wolf, Mango, and honestly, those are like those are the two really big ones. Leffen, maybe? Leffen, I feel like... There was a there was a period where Leffen for Fox players was like far and away the Fox to watch. Um, so I'm going to say those three in roughly that order. Silent Wolf, then Mango, then Leffen. All right, I think that was uh, about it for the Ask Me Anything. Got a lot of good questions from y'all. All of the opportunities uh, for me to, you know, I had, I had to dig deep for some of these. So yeah, a lot of, lot of great questions coming in from uh, all of you out there. And thank you so much for uh, tuning in as usual. Make sure you subscribe to the YouTube for more fun videos that we're going to be releasing in the, in the weeks to come leading up to the next season of Golden Guardians content. Peace out, everybody.